Some say that West Virginia is a labor of love, a state of steel makers, a land where men of sinew dig rich black coal from the rolling hills and mountains, a state where industry is growing at a terrific rate. West Virginia. So every West Virginian will quickly tell you is a state with its eyes firmly on the future, building, finding new ways to occupy its heart and hand. There are new roads being built in this beautiful state, roads which beckon to the restless traveler, promising him a glimpse of his American heritage such as he might find nowhere else. For it is a little known but wonderful fact that West Virginia, with its eyes toward the future, has still taken care to cherish and preserve its pioneering past. This is not a scene of the past, but of the present, a recreation of the heritage which is the proud common treasure of all Americans and which can be found today by the traveler in the West Virginia hills. The spinning wheel turns, and yarn is made now as it once was made. The life and the energy which conquered a lonely, rugged land are recreated as real today as they were 200 years ago. The covered wagon rolls, rumbling and creaking across trails which were broken by such wheels. blacksmith's hammer rings again from the quiet hollows. Shingles are split for a cabin roof. Baskets are woven from native oak. The dexterous hands of a weaver create fabric for colorful clothing. The potter's wheel turns still, and the quilting party creates a masterpiece in covering, plus good conversation. Even old-time brooms are made from the hardwood of a heavily forested state. What may seem most incredible of all, the hearts and hands which perform these time-honored tasks are not those of hobbyists. Most of all, not of amateurs. These are proud West Virginians who are building what may be the state's newest, most interesting industry since the days of the early pioneers. More handcraft glass plants are located in West Virginia than in any of our 50 states. At 20 plants across the state, visitors are asked to come and watch glass being made by hand, just as it has been made down through the centuries. Few Americans have seen it. The visitor is never satisfied just to watch and marvel. He wants to take home such unique products that are made by no machine, each made with its own stamp of individuality. No two pieces of handmade glassware are exactly alike, except in one way. They are all beautiful. All across West Virginia at hotels, motels, restaurants, and state parks, such products of local talent are now available to the traveler, who can rest assured that West Virginia souvenirs are made by West Virginians. A perennial interest to the visitor are the many West Virginia handcraft centers dedicated entirely to the production, display, and sale of native artwork. Here the visitor can find many profound insights into the state's history, humor, and personality. At one such craft center near Bluefield, sculptors turn native stone and hardwood into dozens of shapes. Painters add their own brand of artistry.
Ogilvy Institute at Wheeling is another outstanding art and craft center where interesting historic crafts are practiced and native talents are on constant display. Each July, however, beautiful Cedar Lakes Conference Center near Ripley is the gracious host for scores of the state's most talented craftsmen. They come here to display their wares, demonstrate their skills, and sell their finished products to thousands of visitors from across the nation and many foreign countries, too. In this center of natural beauty, the visitor also finds the finest assortment of tantalizing native foods, from country ham and garden vegetables to delicious homemade ice cream. And before your very eyes, apple butter is made. Even the old-time version of the modern twist is made from homegrown burley tobacco. Nationally famous folk singers form the bulk of the entertainment for the annual Mountain State Art and Craft Fair. Not only are many intricate instruments fashioned here, but they also provide much of the background music. Square dancing is a feature attraction of this yearly festivity. products of the master are displayed at these festivities, which are encouraged by the state government and by the Mountain State Artists and Craftsmen's Guild. Visitors warmly welcomed. Almost everything produced at the fair can be purchased on the spot, but often individuals and retailers place orders for future delivery. No matter how modest your taste or how limited your budget, there's always something for everyone at the Mountain State Art and Craft Fair. From the delightful Wimby Diddle, which serves no useful purpose, to the hand-carved figurines of mountain folks, there's a complete variety of gifts. Native stones fashioned by nature in white water streams are collected, polished, and fitted into jewelry. Even coal is cut and fashioned into ornate earrings and a variety of coal jewelry. Especially for the ladies, a wide variety of hand-fashioned dolls, from corn husk dolls straight from the farm to the beautiful ceramic-type dolls fresh from the ovens. These dolls in homemade clothing are the pride of doll collectors the world over. Talented young artists are on hand to provide a personal-type souvenir, a portrait while you wait. At the Art and Craft Fair, eager youngsters work side by side with the master craftsmen, learning, feeling the thrill of creativity. Many will make their careers in such fascinating work. In fact, a unique training program has been initiated by the state and by private groups who have resolved that the homegrown American culture of the Appalachian Mountains will not die. Artists volunteer their time, talents, and patience to hand down the skills of their ancestors as they train the hearts and hands of a new generation. As a result, cottage-type industry featuring such skills is beginning to thrive all across West Virginia. A proud native industry far removed from the constant sameness of mass-produced products. No, the old America is not dead. It thrives in West Virginia.
These youngsters are a select few, each one chosen because of his or her special ability. It's fascinating to watch these intent young people as they work. Someday they will paint, sculpt, carve, or weave, quite like the masters at their side. But for now, they work long and hard, striving always for perfection. And so the old skills are not lost, but are passed on to future generations. The future of the traditional craftsman and the talented artist is indeed bright in West Virginia. The wisdom shown in developing an apprentice program to perpetuate these native skills has already brought new opportunity to many. And the young people are responding. And that is a good sign in this broad land of ours. The existence of such traditional American culture is needed in an age that has often separated the worker from the end result of his labors. Through an extension of markets and increased training, these traditions are being preserved. Just as important, a visitor to West Virginia can purchase a product which truly represents the state's personality. Through this new dimension of the mountain state's economic, a fading culture has indeed been reborn. Create products by the hand which people seek for their own pleasure and enjoyment, that is self-rewarding. Society can offer no greater reward, nor more worthwhile incentive, than a chance for the hands to work where the heart is. 